Lithgow. Absolutely. Um, we started recognizing Difference Makers as our uh, vision to be uh, the premier school district in the state of Missouri, and uh, we are so excited about that, and that will happen through Difference Makers that uh, work for us and uh, as stakeholders community-wise as we're all working uh, together. So uh, tonight, I believe Lori Ross will be introducing our first Difference Maker uh, under our learning uh, core value. And uh, so I'll turn it over to you and we'll go from there. Well, good evening. Last month, Callaway Hills Elementary was recognized as being one of America's healthiest schools. You might have saw that on the news. Um, additional highlights uh, for this first year um, with Kelsey Christman, the Healthy School Coordinator work, we have had the Callaway Hills Cooking Club, we've had the Garden and Fitness Club, all of which were getting lots of calls from around um, the state wanting to know about the program and how they could get it started in their schools. Um, we have four schools that have been part of the Healthy Snack of the Month Club, which is Callaway, East, Thorpe, and South. Um, they have also participated in the Receipt Return Program, the MU Extension Nutrition Class, March Madness, Staff Challenge, and um, a themed Fitness Week at all of those buildings. And so one of the big things that Kelsey helped get started this year was the walking school bus at Thorpe Gordon. And so we are really proud of all the work that Kelsey has um, accomplished this year and um, we're looking forward to next year. And so I don't know that some of the others are here tonight that um, we'd like to recognize with Kelsey Christman, but Justin Reynolds, Callaway Hills, Sarah Thompson, South Elementary, Sarah Wilkinson at Thorpe Gordon and Rob Clark at East Elementary. So we want to say congratulations for all the great work that you do. On behalf of the board and myself, I want to tell you thank you for being a difference maker. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next, I believe uh, Sarah Wilding will be introducing uh, our next difference maker under our partnership value. And it is my pleasure to be here to introduce Steve Brenneman tonight. Um, the goal and the mission of JC Rotary Rust is to give back to the community in which they live. And Steve is here to share some experiences and some things he's done through their volunteering program at Southwest Early Childhood Center. He and the Rotarians come and read on a weekly basis in our library to our students and really help promote that love for learning, that, that, that eagerness to read out of a book. Steve and I were talking when I came in tonight about how that's where it starts. That's where we're gonna start our kids on the road to reading at or above grade level by inspiring that love for literature and Steve and the Rotarians come they share their time they provide themselves as role models and they share literacy with our youngest scholars in Jeff City Public Schools so Steve and the Rotarians are difference makers not only for Southwest Early Childhood Center but for the district as a whole as we partner together to help build the skills for these children to accomplish what they need to in their school career and beyond so we thank Steve and all he does we have a huge goal to help kids read over, read a thousand books before they get to kindergarten, yeah, and we're good. getting there, aren't we? Thank you. Karen would probably also like to mention that he's Steve is president of the uh, foundation board, so. He's uh, busy for a lot of reasons, so helping us not just with the Rotary, but in a lot of time as the president of the There's foundation. There's no one board. in your contact uh, matching Rotary. We are Southwest Early Childhood Center from the Rotary Club, so we, we do Santa Day, and we pay for a lot of things over there that they can't afford, you know, that they need, but, you know, we all understand the limitations of it. Yeah. Uh, we do a lot, and thanks, thanks to people like Ryan and Dr. Winston Rutledge, and, uh, Alan Mudd, and I can go on and on, all the men and women who've been reading there. Uh, I didn't get a chance to read but four times this year. You know, the first year I read you know, nearly every week, but now, fortunately, we're behind it. So we appreciate the partnership, uh, Dr. Lincoln, because I think it's what it's all about. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think that's all. Everyone is making a difference by being here, but those are all that we're recognizing tonight. <laughs> very good. 
Okay, next item, consent agenda items. We look for approval of that with the addition of the revised personnel report that you should have at your seats. So moved. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Lindsay. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Very good. The consent agenda items are adopted. Now under reports and communications, superintendent update. Back to you, Dr. Hunt. Absolutely. And I would first, I didn't tell her I was going to do this. Ryan Burns. I'd like to introduce our director of communications that will start July 1, who's with us tonight. So if you would stand, so we just recognize you. So we're excited to have you start with us here July 1 and welcome here this evening. Excited to be here. Okay, there we go. Yeah. There we go. I also wanted to uh, just kind of touch on a couple things. Uh, they had referenced, Sarah had referenced earlier about the reading uh, with our number one goal that 100% of our students are reading at or above grade level. Uh, we're excited about that. We have some training here on the uh, 29th of May, some ABLE training. Uh, we currently with our middle schools, um, we have volunteers in the community and uh, they do an outstanding job. Uh, we've had around 30 volunteers and our goal is to get 150 um, by this next year. So we're excited about that. We have some training with our central office folks, some other stakeholders, uh, Philip. Uh, some other folks uh, in the community and as we recognize uh, that it's that it's not that hard uh, that we can all do that that we can all make a difference in a child's life at the end of the day it just comes down to time and uh, they gave us some some guidelines uh, to do that so we want to experience that ourselves and so that was on the 29th uh, of May here um, summer school enrollment our summer school uh, Dr. Schindorf will touch on that in his report here uh, with that also touch on our diversity training uh, that we had last week um, I'm meeting with all of our principals, and uh, as our goal is to become uh, the premier school district in the state with our vision, uh, just meeting, um, talking with each of our principals. So uh, about a third of the way done, meeting with them individually, and that's been really good. A lot of great things uh, have came out of that. I wanted to touch on with our boundary lines. On the next two nights, uh, we have our boundary line uh, community town hall meeting tomorrow night. There's, there's two in the next uh, two days. Um, tomorrow night, six o'clock at Thomas Jefferson Middle School, and Wednesday night, uh, at six o'clock at Lewis and Clark. Uh, they will both be the same. Uh, we want to invite the entire community to at least uh, attend one. If you're over ambitious and would like to attend two, more power to you. Um, so yeah, we'll do that uh, tomorrow night. So I want to invite folks uh, to that. And basically, uh, we're going to look at through the boundary committee, uh, three scenarios. These are all on our district website. You can see the, the three scenarios. They're not three finalized scenarios, but through the committee uh, of three recommendations to look at and poke holes in pros, cons, and that's what we're going to do tomorrow night. We're going to ask folks for their opinion. Uh, we're going to give groups. We're basically going to put them with their tables and show the three scenarios and ask them um, to discuss them at their table. And then we're going to ask each table to report out to the group. The and um, dialed is not in there we go. It's not, but here we'll keep going. And so basically from that, just asking for input. And we do believe we're stronger together and not that we're all going to agree. We can agree to disagree, but we value input. We have empathy to try to look at it from uh, someone else's perspective. So no final decision has been made. Uh, the final decision will be made here by the Board of Education. And uh, we hope to have that in place here. Uh, I've mentioned August. Uh, being that the school will start in, the, in uh, August of 19 as far as when it will go into effect. We want to have one year. Uh, as of right now, if I was a betting man, I would say September, which is one month behind. Uh, we'd rather be one month behind and do it right than to squeeze it into uh, and trying to hurry with that. So we anticipate a first reading here at the, the July board meeting uh, as an agenda item, which would give the public an opportunity to come address the board um, and say, this is why this is the greatest scenario in the world, or this is why this one stinks and now they can give their opinion. Um, we've had, I believe, 17 official meetings in the community uh, through, the, uh, through the Boundary Committee, 18 unofficial meetings, um, our monthly coffee, we've talked about it, uh, talked about on the radio, uh, call in, numerous face-to-face, -face, phone calls, emails, etc. So the basically three scenarios, you can go to our district website at jcschools.us uh, on the Boundary Committee uh, to your left that has the three scenarios that we'll be uh, discussing tomorrow night. So. Um, just want to give an update on that. Do you guys have any questions on that? Uh, here's a board with regards to that process or any part of that? You know, probably just a quick note to the thanks for every person that served on that committee. I know this was not an easy task that we asked them to volunteer to do. It's, uh, you know, it's something that, that we appreciate. Uh, and they, they do those jobs so other folks, the rest of us don't have to. So we certainly appreciate their service. Absolutely. And we'll make sure and thank those folks uh, accordingly. So. That is all the update I have. Very good. Thank you. Chief of Learning Update from Dr. Schindor. 
<clears throat> Thank you. I'll tell you a few this. I'm sorry, I'm starting to lose my voice. <clears throat> Give you an update on our diversity training. Last Wednesday, uh, the 6th, we did have uh, round two of our diversity training with Dr. Simmons. And uh, um, as you know, we have three events scheduled with her. And so our next one will be on uh, August the 3rd. Um, but uh, I'm doing a lot of great work. We had a great uh, group there. Again, it's, uh, it's not just a uh, school district. Uh, we also had some board members there. Uh, we also have uh, juvenile office and some police officers and different uh, community groups that are um, participating in that uh, training. And so uh, it's been going well and um, looking forward to August the 3rd. Um, by way of summer school, we, uh, I told you last time that uh, we were shooting for 3,500. We had that many that had registered. Uh, on the, uh, the first week of summer school, we had 3,410 students show up, officially showed up, and so we're excited about that. That is 500 more than we had last year, so we're excited about the increase. And we believe some of those things are um, not just the changes that we made in the elementary program, made it a little more enticing, but uh, we have a lot more uh, secondary students and we're excited about that. And so I believe that count, we had uh, 565 uh, middle schoolers that showed up and 672 high schoolers. So excited about those numbers, getting some more secondary students involved in the, in the program. Um, in terms of our uh, ELA resource, I know I've been talking to you about this. We uh, have um, started that process. Um, we've spent the last a couple of months with our curriculum team looking talking with companies who offer resources and what we did is we brought in a group of teachers and they designed a rubric for us and we use that rubric to determine if the when the companies talk to us does their product provide what it is that the teachers are looking for and so we use that rubric to score them we have narrowed down our uh, choices for the pilot and so in early fall we will begin a pilot with school-wide um, resource will be a K-8 resource piloted and Pearson will be English 1 and English 2. That'll be early fall and then late fall we'll use HMH which is a K-12 product. So we have two companies um, right now that we have uh, um, engaged them and they're willing to work with us on a pilot so we'll start that this fall. I'm excited about that process but knowing that that, um, that is going to take us a year Rather than wait a year to get resources in the hands of teachers, we have uh, we did a little bit of work with some of our um, buildings that have been using a product. Um, we currently use iReady for testing, and iReady offers what's called a toolkit, and it is a basically it is a, a planning tool for designing lessons around your standards. Um, and so we um, have been able to secure that resource for our teachers for next year. So rather than waiting a year, they will have next year the iReady toolbox, <clears throat> which will help them with planning. Um, rigorous instruction around our curriculum. So we're excited about that. So we don't have to wait a whole year. So any questions about that, about the toolbox? Okay. <clears throat> um, by way of testing update with iReady, we have historically given iReady, <clears throat> excuse me, three times a year, beginning, middle, and end. Um, we made the decision because reading is our priority that we need to monitor it a little uh, closer. So we will be using the iReady assessment quarterly, so four times next year, increasing by one time. Um, and in order to help accommodate that, instead of just adding tests, um, what we're going to be communicating up to staff is, in addition to iReady four times, um, or three times in the past, teachers also did what are called end of unit assessments. So if you teach a unit, you typically have about five units on average. At the end of that unit, you give an assessment. We created those assessments. They have not been um, awesome assessments. They've been mediocre and have not been used well. And so rather than continue to use an assessment that we're not getting um, return on, we're going to allow teachers the, uh, um, the opportunity to use those assessments but not require those assessments like we have in the past. So we'll be reducing about five assessments and increasing the one I ready. So fewer assessments next year is what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, and then just uh, a few technology updates, just so you know. Um, the um, tech department has collected all of the six through nine Chromebooks. Um, they've collected those, inventoried those, tagged them, looking at those that need repairs because we'll use those again next year. Um, they're in the process of getting the repairs done and they'll get them back out to those students at the start of the year. Uh, as you know, the high school is going to, um, the iPads are coming out and the Chromebooks, we're going to go one-to-one -one Chromebook next year for the start. So beginning next year, we will be 612 Chromebook one-to-one. -one. So we did uh, make the purchase of 1900 Chromebooks that will um, put us in a 612 one-to-one -one, um, Chromebook next year. Um, 
Also, you may or may not know Morro Heights. Um, we did some rewiring over there. We had the um, some old Cat 3 wiring, Category 3 wiring um, that was outdated. We um, tech department went in, pulled that out, and updated it to uh, Category 6, which is uh, more modern, a little faster speed, and, and a little more reliable. So that process is done. It has been um, rewired, and it now has capacity for um, growth in the future. Um, Along that line of um, fiber and networking, our current fiber contract that we have um, does not allow for um, expansions. And so knowing that we have Capital City, which is going to be an expansion, our current contract won't allow us to do that. So um, Joe is working with the company to do, uh, um, he's working to do an RFP to um, change our contract to ensure that when Capital City comes online, we're gonna be able to expand those services and make sure that we are ready to go so when we have that RFP work done, complete, we'll bring it to you for approval, but just want you to know we're working on that process for Capital City. And then also along the lines of Capital City and our current Jeff City High School, um, construction is underway, as you know, and uh, we've said all along that we're going to change the, uh, what technology looks like in, in, the, in both sites. Um, the smart boards are coming down and we've been working with teachers and with companies on um, smart TVs that look very similar to what you have here on the wall here and basically allow us to do a lot of uh, teachers to do a lot more interactive things um, wirelessly and around the classroom and be mobile in the room to do things um, on the TV and, and, and a lot of different methods of projecting. And so we did run into some issues with that and so we worked with a different co couple of different companies to make sure we can get the product that's going to work for us and do what our teachers have asked to do. So we do have another device that's showing up um, this week at Dix Road that we believe is going to accomplish those things. Um, once we get it set up, we will bring teachers back in again, let them play with it, make sure that it does what they um, need it to do. And, uh, but we believe we have found the right product and so we're getting excited, getting much closer to um, finding the right product for our classrooms. And the company that we're working with uh, has agreed to set aside um, the devices that we need to ensure that we have them uh, in current Jeff City High School. We pulled out the smart boards for the um, construction. So they've assured us that they have the devices that we'll need if we go with this device to get into Jeff City High School for, for August. So we believe we're ready to go with those. Brian, right, just one question. Will the Chromebooks be handled the same way that we did the iPads as far as uh, the ability for the student to pay a deposit or whatever and to take them home or if they or the insurance if they want to take them home every day or how does that work we certainly they'll certainly have the opportunity for insurance but I think are you asking me whether or not they can purchase the device when they graduate or no just if they can take them just home. if they'll be able to take them home like they did I, I know the I mean it's my understanding that previously with the iPad if they paid the insurance they were able to take them home there were some kids that maybe couldn't and they, those have to stay at school. Yeah, and I can't tell you that we have a final decision on whether it is the same process of if you have insurance, you can, and if you don't, you can't. I'm not ready to say that that is our final decision. Um, what we believe is that, is that the device itself is a resource for kids. Is for, so for kids to be able to use that resource 24-7 um, is a goal of ours, but we need to also make sure that we can do it um, we can do it safely to make sure that they can access information outside of the um, school setting and that uh, we can manage those devices when they do get damaged. So we're working on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Good Next item of business, we have Mr. Bob Weber pinch hitting for Jason Hoffman for our CFO COO update. Bob, you're going to talk to us about summer school? Uh, we're going to school. Talk about Unless you want to talk about summer school. <laughs> Actually, I'm pitch hitting for Jason. I want to talk to you about the budget. Don't even know where to Give start. Give us an update on, on the uh, uh, summer project. Facility, uh, summer projects. Actually, in your pocket, I, I kind of put a recap. I know over the last several months, I bring in a contract here and there and ask for approval, but. Real quick, uh, we're going to be partial re-roofing at Simonson, Miller Center, East and Thorpe Gordon. Uh, the asbestos removal that's occurring at the high school is a contract that we administer and we supervise uh, in cooperation with scheduling with NAPHOTS, but it's one of our, it's uh, one of our contracts. Uh, we put a new intercom in at Cedar Hill. It's actually finished. We're doing tuck pointing and caulking at and uh, cleaning and sealing the brick at uh, Lewis and Clark. Uh, we're, we're making driveway improvements, widening at both Lawson and Thomas Jefferson. 
uh, widening the drive for parent pickup at South. <coughs> uh, Wilson Clark, we're putting in two new hot water heaters, large commercial heaters. Uh, Cedar Hill had some residential doors and the used to be an open pod and then they came in and uh, divided it up but they use residential type doors so we're putting in some solid core doors and uh, uh, putting in some new carpeting or I'm sorry removing some carpeting and putting in new tile at law at uh, Callaway Hill Lawson we're putting in a divider wall in the physical therapy area to to uh, uh, add some additional classroom space at, uh, uh, we do a lot of small miscellaneous projects uh, we're bringing in it's uh, our staff is responsible for the bidding and procurement of the trailers at uh, the high school so we're bringing in six mobile classrooms one is in place the rest are should be arriving this week <coughs> uh, we're in discussions with the city of Oak Summit about the possibility of hooking on to the sewer system in Oak Summit uh, for Callaway Hills presently it's we ever have, have a lagoon there and um, DNR regulates that and and we think long term we need to get off of a lagoon and get hooked into a sewer system that could be a, a pretty sizable project um, matter of fact we're meeting again with the new city administrator this week to see if, see where we're at there uh, in the summer we do a lot of preventive maintenance uh, cleaning of of equipment the coils and filters and belts and so forth um, we repaint the curbs and parking lot stripes and <coughs> things around the school landscape or mulching landscaping those types of things our custodians do deep cleaning course re wax all of the floors and so forth most of that occurs in July because of summer school as far as the waxing is concerned <clears throat> also the summer um, is a busy time for all of our inspections all of our elevators and escalators are inspected our uh, uh, we inspect uh, our bleachers and basketball goals and playgrounds all that equipment um, we have the fire extinguishers the hood systems the fire alarms uh, security systems <coughs> all of that are inspected asbestos we have to do every six months surveillance of what we have in in our facilities uh, in all the facilities and that's done every six months we normally do it one time in the summer and one time at Christmas uh, the fire department comes in twice a year they usually one time summer the next times around Christmas and uh, and do a detail uh, fire inspection so between uh, the capital projects and uh, the inspections and, and then our staff goes through quite a bit of training also in the summer uh, required some is required state training that they that we have to do so real quick in a nutshell any questions uh, summers summers are usually pretty busy for our our department and and uh, of course we're involved with the uh, capital city high school and Jeff City high school with uh, coordination with NABOTS uh, on, on those projects as well I might just say kudos to Bob and his guys and uh, all of our mains and custodial folks as we uh, we're trying to raise the bar in everything we do reading learning but also in our buildings we don't expect our buildings to look like the Ritz Carlton uh, but we don't want them to look like a Motel 6 either so if it's uh, I use Jury in or that's no endorsement for Jury in by the way I'm just uh, um, you know raising the bar as we go and so I kudos and thanks to Bob and his guys for what they do so we don't try to leave the light on for you either <laughs> thank you thank you Bob absolutely Last item of business under reports and communications item D. Uh, Mr. Enlow was good enough to spend some of his weekend time here recently at a uh, MSBA leadership forum. So I asked if he would be uh, willing to share with us his thoughts and what his experience was. Yeah, I'm there. recalling that uh, <clears throat> Ms. Schwartz uh, nominated me to be the delegate for the MSBA. And so 
Um, I tried to take that responsibility. I did attend the opening uh, Army and a uh, delegate assembly for MSBA, um, and it was quite informative, actually. So there was an opening session, which they had the chief equity officer from the National uh, Association of School Boards, and so um, it was interesting to hear her. She was uh, a, a dynamic speaker, and um, then they had breakout sessions, and probably the most informative was a legislative update. So there was an opportunity to hear from MSBA representatives about their work at the Capitol and about the legislation that uh, was both introduced and um, now there were a lot of bills that were introduced that didn't get through both houses this past year um, and we're glad about some of those. Um, the one that probably has the most impact uh, was a House bill and Senate bill regarding virtual courses that were are being required to be offered. And so I see Don shaking her head that that uh, will have some impact. And so we're, we're still waiting to see how that shakes out. But there is some requirement legislation that uh, could impact us in terms of making virtual courses available to uh, to our students. Um, there at the delegate assembly, we actually there was an election of officers for MSBA um, for president and president elect and then uh, recognition of some board members and uh, boards that achieve certifications. Probably, I, I, I told somebody I think the most significant message that I came away with and the most significant impression I had was the fact that um, we as board members have an opportunity to, uh, to be heard and to make our voice heard in the legislative process. And the importance of that in terms of, you know, our, board, our voice being heard at the state capitol when there is legislation that um, is introduced that we see as being positive or negative for us uh, in our district. We need to ensure that we, uh, you know, work to, to have our voice heard. Um, we were reminded that we are elected officials, that uh, we represent a huge constituency across the state collectively, and so that uh, it was, it's important, in fact, when there is legislation that, um, that we, you know, make sure we, we uh, let our, our voices you know, be heard. And finally, the update on surrounding uh, on issues surrounding the State Board of Education. Currently, uh, as you may have heard in the news, there are only three uh, appointed members of the State Board of Education for a board that has eight members. And so they have not had a quorum and have been able to conduct any business since December. Um, Governor Parsons has said uh, that he was going to make it a priority to get that done, to get those uh, vacancies appointed. And even as recently as last Friday, I think in the news, he was talking about that he may make a couple of appointments this week and trying to get a quorum so that they can begin to function. There are some things that the board, state board needs to do uh, legislatively. They have some mandates that they're supposed to conduct some business. And so there are things that have been piling up that they haven't been able to do. And uh, so that's probably, um, you know, the biggest uh, thing in terms of the new administration and getting those uh, board appointments made so they can conduct business. Any questions for Karen? Appreciate you taking the time to attend. Yeah, it was it was informative and interesting, and it was you know again interesting to see. I think the the significance of what we can do as as board members. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Absolutely. Future dates. I uh, won't go through all of those for you all, but just to bring your attention to the top three. Larry has already mentioned the. Uh, uh, Community meetings tomorrow night and Wednesday in regards to the boundary meetings. You see those listed on there. And then now uh, have a budget approval meeting scheduled for later this month. So make sure you have that on your calendar if you don't, please. And uh, already looking like we've got dates for the beginning of the school year. Uh, starting to fill in. On the new business, We want to talk to item A. We need to reschedule. Look at rescheduling the September Board of Education meeting. Are you asking me? Yes. Yes, absolutely. We have our uh, the second Monday of each month is when our uh, our board meets, and um, that is our community partnerships. As we talk about being stronger together, that is Halias's uh, golf tournament on that day and uh, afternoon and so evening and so I've been a part of that. So we've rescheduled the last few years so I can uh, partner with them. And uh, I believe that date, if we did the same date last year on the Tuesday, which would be September 11th, Tuesday instead of Monday, the 10th, it would be Tuesday, September 11th, or another option is two weeks after the 11th, the fourth Monday, which would be the 24th. So whatever you see um, that you'd like to do, whether we keep it the same as last year, 
that's at the uh, direction of the board. Well, I appreciate that. I, I think it's a that's a valuable opportunity for you to participate in. I know you've done it in the past mm -hmm. and have shared with past boards that that's been worthwhile, um, certainly from a partnership standpoint. So um, that would be my suggestion. Uh, you all want to look at your calendars in terms of what your availability is either on the 11th or the 24th? 11th works for me. Me too. Okay. That's fine. Uh, Perfect. Do we need a motion to approve that change? Well, let's do it just for fun. I'll uh, make that motion. Okay, I'll second. We're live. Thank you, kid. Mm -hmm. Additional comments here. None. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Very good. And September meetings rescheduled to September 11th. Very good. Next item of business is MSBA board policy and uh, some policies that the policy committee is bringing for your review and recommendation. Mr. Adlow, do you want to speak to those? So the policy committee met and <clears throat> we reviewed a number of uh, things that um, had some that were, mm -hmm. you know, waiting action, uh, some MSBA policies that had been handed down. Um, there's a, a list and the minutes were included, right? So you all see who was in attendance at that meeting. Um, basically, uh, there are a few things we just wanted to give you as far as old business. There were some uh, questions and the policy committee previously had discussed some uh, questions and issues around drug testing and the policies for that. Um, Dr. Schindorf had been asked to uh, do some research and to find out a few things um, uh, because of concerns that uh, some people had about maybe uh, a student being suspected of being under the influence but then having a huge gap of time where they would be able to uh, get the documentation of the proof and so Dr. Schindor found that um, there was not a significant there were a very small number of uh, only three incidents I think you said where uh, there was an issue with that and so we found that in response to that concern it was in fact not a, a major issue so we discussed that though we we did continue and and determine that there was some additional research that was needed that we wanted to look further into um, the uh, companies that are providing drug testing services for our activities and to see about services that they might be able to, to we might be able to use for expanded beyond activities and so we're gonna uh, again look into the possibility of uh, utilizing some of those services so uh, some discussions around those policies JCFI and JCF or JFCI and uh, JFCI AP so no action at this time on those we did take action and uh, we're bringing forward some recommendations um, and we're going to entertain uh, motions to approve uh, some MSBA recommendations we also have done some research and uh, talk with our counterparts and determine that for some of these policies um, it seems to be uh, standard practice to waive a second reading uh, because they're standard policies that come down we really don't have any uh, flex I mean we either do them or we don't get funding right so um, there are a few of these that we're going to recommend um, that we'd entertain like say a motion to approve and to waive the second reading so the first of those would be IGBD which was at uh, relates to at-risk students um, and I would entertain a motion to approve that and to dismiss with a second reading. Do I hear a second? So moved. Thank you, Lindsay. Any discussion? Questions on that one? So does our, do our policies say we have to have second reading? I mean, are we going against our policies by waiving the second reading? No, I don't believe. I don't, no. No. I don't think so. No, you can do it by motion. Okay. Yeah, we've done it. We've yeah. done it in the past. I don't recall that, but if you, that, 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 that was my question. We don't, we don't was what do our policies say yeah. about? Yeah. 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 So if, if the policies say it's okay, then that's the question. Okay. All right. Any other comments? Questions? Very good. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Very good. Okay. The okay. second one would be uh, regarding graduation requirements. Again, an MSBA recommendation, uh, policy IKF. And same, uh, I would entertain the same uh, recommendation there regarding adoption with the waiving of the second reading. So moved. 
Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Second. Lorelei. Thank you. Thank you, Lorelei. Thank you, Lori. Boy, it's not, okay. I can't. It's, it's, okay. it's, it's on there. <laughs> thank you, Lorelei. Lindsay, Lorelei, Lindsay. Lori. Lindsay. It's two meals, two meals. Got the the <laughs> generation okay. is all right. messed up. Okay. Any, any additional comments, <laughs> questions on that one? And hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 And close the name. And the third uh, policy, JHD, regarding student guidance and counseling. Again, an MSBA recommendation that we recommend approving and waiving the second reading. So moved. Thank second. you, Lindsay. Second. Thank you, Lori. Additional comments, questions? And here we go. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Finally, JH. DF, which is related, uh, relates to suicide awareness and prevention, and again, same, uh, same approach. So moved. Thank you, Lindsay. Second. Hey, you're a second word. Right yes. Okay. Thank you. Questions, comments. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, say nay. Uh, a couple of policies that we're not recommending any action at this point, or one that we're not recommending any action at this point, um, and that's relationship to the uh, Comprehensive School Improvement Plan. And Dr. Lithicum is going to continue to review and um, make bring forward recommendations, suggestions at our next policy meeting. So no, uh, no call for action at this point. Is that DFJ? That is uh, DF. No, excuse me, that's so AD, DF. the comprehensive, yeah, that's... Okay, did we skip DFJ? Yeah, we haven't talked yeah. about DFJ. It's, <coughs> okay, sorry. DFJ is next, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yes. DFJ nice. is the last one. Um, and it relates to a uh, recommendation that was made by uh, Denise Pierce in, in regards to our uh, accounting practices to make them align with uh, federal standards, and in fact, um, we'll make it a little bit easier as we understand as they explain the policies and the way that uh, expenses are reported and so forth by our faculty and staff and so um, we are entertaining um, a motion to approve this but we are not we are suggesting that today be our first reading and that we will do a second reading at our special called uh, budget meeting on the 25th so this would be a first reading of that and uh, second reading would be later and then we can still adopt that it still it goes into effect this needs to be in effect by july 1 and that would allow us to meet that requirement uh, it's got to be in effect by july 1 yes so we'll vote on it on our june 25th board meeting yes correct okay. that's our yep. plan yes okay. so we need uh entertain a motion to approve it with a second reading uh for that date i don't think we have to do that do we do we, if we're having a second reading, we don't. If we're wait, if we we don't take any, any action at this point, then if we're going to do a second reading in June, I believe that's correct. Am I correct on that? I think that's right. Okay. I think that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No action. Just accept the first reading. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then there are uh, the final ones that you see listed there. Really require no. Um, well, they're. I don't see them. They're not on the. Uh, they're not on the agenda, but there were some others uh, regarding professional staff uh, compensation, regarding discipline of students with disabilities, uh, administrative procedures with students uh, with disabilities, and um, receiving and those students receiving accommodation uh, under Section 504 by not uh, having special education services. All of those are requiring no action because our policies, our board policies, uh, are already are in line with the policy the way it's recommended. So no action is necessary because everything is consistent with what is being recommended. So, thank you, Ken. Appreciate you. your work on this. Yeah, the, I will mention one final thing in this. You'll see a note in there about boundary lines, and we are corner, we discussed and we do uh, believe that we. Uh, need a policy regarding boundary lines. Um, we entertained that discussion, didn't make any action, but there was consensus that we should adopt a policy. So it is our intent to, at the next uh, meeting, to have further discussion and to formally come back to the board at some point with a policy that would 
uh, give us some guidance on future uh, guidelines on how we would approach uh, boundary line discussions, not waiting until a major construction project to drive that, um, having some probably time, either a time frame and or combination of time frame and other, uh, you know, demographic changes or things that might drive that change or review. But we do believe it's important to have a policy in place that would help us not be caught 10 years down the road and say, well, we haven't looked at boundary lines since uh, we built Capital City High School. So. Okay. Basically, I just interject of a visiting boundary lines on a more regular basis. As yeah. a general here, we've just not gone there. So just have a more consistent regular basis. And then the also, the uh, if uh, the demographics change dramatically, of uh, some guidelines to, uh, to address that. Yeah. So we look forward to yep. more information on that from the administration in the future. Yeah. Next item, business approved transportation routes for the upcoming year. Mr. Underwood. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right. Uh, I just got a four slide presentation, so real short. <laughs> uh, first slide, you go to the next one there. No, this yeah, this is fine. That's fine. Uh, that's our school district broke out into the uh, elementaries, and uh, right now, 223 square miles of uh, school districts is what we uh, we service. Uh, the next slide that you'll see is uh, what you guys are approving here this evening is our routes, and that's kind of what it looks like all jumbled up on there. There's a uh, total of uh, I think they believe there's 64 routes on there and that's what it looks like uh, when you look at it uh, different colors you zoom in and they start spreading apart but uh, pretty much mirrors the map that you saw before you go to the next one right here if you would 64 routes uh, 35 buses that run two tier routes uh, they'll run one school then they'll head back out and run a, a second tier uh, Jason did want me to mention that uh, right now, currently, we spend about $41,776 for a single tier route annually for one bus, okay? And uh, that's about $240 a day. And then the second tier is uh, $4,400 annually. So we get a pretty significant price break. It's only $25.33 for that second tier. So if we did run all single tier buses for all of our schools, uh, we'd be running right at about 100 routes and it'd be about 1.3 million more dollars in transportation uh, to run all single tier routes if we had a belt schedule all the same. Uh, but currently with the two tier routes, uh, we're saving ourselves 1.3 million. Uh, six compass room or transition room routes, 11 early childhood routes, three transfer buses, uh, whether that be EER, Nichols, Samaritan Center, transfers and early releases. Uh, we utilize three buses for, for all of those uh, uh, different programs that we have. The early releases are students that get early released uh, throughout the day. And so they'll do a transfer, then they'll go do an early release and then transfer. So we keep pretty much those three buses running all day from, from bell to bell. And then uh, currently, transporting about 5,467 students uh, twice a day. Uh, that uh, in percentage is about 58% of our population that's enrolled gets transported on the school bus. Um, average ridership on school buses right now is about 55 students per bus. We run two different sized buses, 72 passenger and 89 passenger <coughs> buses. Uh, the flat nose that you see out there, those are 89, so the ones that look like a traditional school bus, so those would be 72 passenger buses. And then, uh, and then uh, that's, let's see, 818,000 miles scheduled. That's what you're looking at in your packets. Uh, we will do 1 million plus by the end of the year, and that in includes uh, student activity trips and then uh, the uh, transfers and, and what have you. But uh, a lot of the transfers at Samaritan Center are scheduled, but uh, early releases vary. I mean, we can go from here all the way up to Holt Summit for one student and back. And so that's uh, one of the things that uh, drive that difference in scheduled miles versus end of year. 
Now scheduled, we don't have uh, activity trips scheduled either, so that uh, also drives that 1 million plus miles by the end of year. And then the next slide is just uh, anybody have any questions regarding what you're looking at? Question. Okay, and I guess I would just ask for approval for these uh, for these rounds. Move to approve. Second. Thank you, Rich. Any additional comments? Any questions? Good. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Yeah. Next item of business. Consider the non consider and approve the non core curriculum, Dr. Schindor. Okay, in front of you you have about twenty one different uh, non core curriculum. Um, so uh, would you prefer that we do this as a group or to do them individually? Group. A group. I think group. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a there is a clear preference. Okay. Group. So just by yeah. by method of summary, so all of these uh, all of these non-core follow the same process that our core curriculum do, and that is that they follow the regular curriculum design. These were all this work was completed by our uh, classroom teachers. They came together over the past year, um, organized these curriculum by the updated standards, and so a lot of work was put into them, and it's good work. And so we're excited about it. So I'd ask that you approve the non core curriculum. Move to approve. Thank you, Warren. Second. Thank you, Rich. Any uh, additional comments? Any questions for Dr. Schindler about this? Thank you for your work on this. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really good timeline. It's a big yes. lift. A lot of, yeah. yeah. Killed a lot of trees. A lot of work. No, it's, it's, a, it's, work. A, it's a ton of work. And it's so core to us. Yes. It's, it's foundational to what the district is here to do. So thank you. Uh, uh, information. Good. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Schindler. Can you take the guys with you? Yeah. <laughs> you want all of them at once? Can you, or you're can you carry them all at once? Yeah. We may throw them in. Right. <laughs> and if you would, please, Dr. Schindler, uh, Superintendent, would you please pass on words of appreciation for uh, all of the uh, work that the staff put into Absolutely. that? You know, Absolutely. That's a big project. So. Absolutely. Huge. Right. Thank you for that. Yeah. All right. Last item of business and your open agenda is a GMP amendment for Nimbles, Mr. Weber. All right, I think starting on page 85 is the uh, guaranteed maximum price amendment number four. And this would be for area G, which is uh, the new Jefferson City High School. It would actually be the bank of uh, classrooms on the east side of the building, that's area G. Um, the the uh, would be a six million nine hundred and seventy one thousand five thirty one for amendment four, and to date that brings um, the total to date to twenty six million four seventy eight five eighty and ninety six cents. Uh, this package is the only one that has been bid for Jefferson City High School at this point. Uh, the rest of the amendments have been, guaranteed price amendments have been for Capital City. But there is a big package coming out and it, for too long for, that would be all of the rest of Jefferson City High School. And this next week are the remaining packages for Capital City, is that correct, Dale, do you know? have dealt with Nat Mokes here with us if uh, anybody has questions. So anyway, we'll need approval for this amendment, guaranteed price amendment four. Any questions? Uh, I move to approve. Thank you, Rich. Second. Thank you, Ken. Questions, comments? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed say nay. Okay, thank you. It's approved. Thank, thank you, Bob. Mr. Mr. Appreciate it. So we've asked Laura Lai to do this on a number of occasions. Lori, you want to do the honors this evening? No, I, I can't take it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Motion to one spend yeah. open to enter into closed meeting by roll call vote pursuant to chapter 610.021 of the revised statutes of Missouri section 9 preparation. Preparation? including any discussions or work product on behalf of public government by that's a new one 
or its representatives for negotiations and 14 records which are protected from disclosure by law. We're trying to stop it. We've done it too yeah. many times. I was prepared for that. that. You did well, Orla. Second. Thank you, Rich. Roll call vote, please. Yes. Lindsay, you would like? Yes. Rich? Yes. 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 Yes.